Welcome to the STARS program, seniors taking active roles in society. And now, here's your host, Anita Finley. We're going to have Hal Spielman on our show again. We haven't heard from Hal for a while because he's having too much fun all over the country. He's mostly in New York. (laughs) But we want to thank you very much, Hal, for coming down. Anita, it's always delightful to see you. It's, It's a boost just, just to see your pre- be in oh your presence. Oh my goodness! I feel good, better than I did when I first came. Suddenly solo, great name, and it's a, it's kind of a movement which you yeah. picked up because of your own personal experience. And I think that when people have been together for a long time, as you were with your wife, uh, it is a well. Difficult I guess it's a shock when even if they're if you're prepared. Uh, after a long illness or something, in case my wife was like that. But still, the readjustment to being alone is very, very traumatic and dramatic. Um, and uh, and I, uh, as you know, I wanted to find out how do people cope with that situation when I fell into that. And I turned to my market research background because to me it was a research issue. And we ended up interviewing over 1,600 people, mostly in their 60s and 70s, that had been in at least a 20-year relationship, national samples, different kinds of studies. And it was very revealing in terms of how people then cope and how they behave and they readjust and, and, and in many cases, reconnect. Well, I, now that you're talking about that, I just had one question I was thinking as you were saying that. What if you were never married? And you had a lot of friends. And all of a sudden, your friends either passed away or they moved. Isn't that suddenly solo also? Yes. And I, I didn't research it in that way, but certainly it is because um, that becomes your group and your support group. And as we age, we run into that. I know of the guys I grew up with, um, going back to my, uh, to my team in basketball, uh, my basketball team in high school um, <laughs> at the community center, there are only, of, of the 12 people, there are only three of us left. And, uh, and there, there are big gaps. One of those fellows was um, a guy that I had known since kindergarten. We were one day apart in our birthdays, which we celebrated together every year. And he died last year. And uh, that was... That, that was, was a, a loss, big, wasn't it? A big loss. loss. I spoke at, at, his, at his funeral. And it was a big loss. And... It, and uh, I, I must say I could hardly get through talking about, about him when we were there. I was, I was so upset because our proximity of time and growing up and being little kids together and, and uh, you know, the total life experiences that we had gone through, best man at my wedding, um, that, was, that was a big blow. That was a big blow. Well, when your wife first passed away, was he very important to you in your life? Did you yes. see him a lot? Yes, he was. Um, he was there. Um, and um, uh, he was, in fact, widowed already, but he had found another uh, woman that he was with, uh, and they were very close. And then they did marry, um, which was very nice, a lovely wedding. And her son was the best man at, at this wedding. It was it was quite quite a nice thing. But so now, it encouraged uh, you in a way when you oh, uh, didn't it? Sure, absolutely. Because he he was so happy in this in the, in the and again his wife had been ill for quite a long time. Um, so and and his children that was fascinating. His children actually found this woman and introduced him. She was a woman that had been a friend of his wife's in college. And uh, was a patient of one of his daughters and reintroduced them. And that, that came out. And, of course, we, we know from our research that the largest single category of people that couple, again, are with someone they knew in their past. Hmm. That, that seems to be the, the trend. Is that happening for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I say that laughingly because see how... Now decided, okay, he, he did a lot of research, and he decided, I'm going to have some people, too, in my life. So why don't you take off now and tell everybody what you've been doing and about whether it's romantic um, relationships or whether it's just friends or what you're doing well, in your business. Um, uh, 
I, I think one of the things that's happened, and it's, it's kind of come about in my community in Port Washington in New York, is that uh, I, I get called on more to fulfill other roles within the community. So I'm on a library board, and, uh, and the new children's library will be named after my wife and myself. Uh, and, and this is an enormous children's library. It's not some little dinky thing. Uh, if you think a 40 by 80 room, you'll have some idea what we're talking about. It's a big, big deal in, that, in our community. It's a real center. The library is a real community center. And then um, just a few months ago, I hosted uh, for the Port Washington Senior Center their uh, major fundraiser dinner. And uh, I, was, I was talking there and looking around, and I realized that the people there were all very active in the community, and there were about uh, 150, 170 people. And I recognized many of them as active in the community. But also, most were in their 60s and 70s. Mm. And I said, wait a second. Let me think about this a little bit. So I, I called my son, who is a neuropsych doctor. I said, what, what kind of, of occurrence is, uh, is dementia? Because we're always saying, oh, forgetting and the forgetting jokes. So he went on online to NIH. National Institute of Health. And their data said that that 14% of people over 65 will have some kind of dementia problem. That's a pretty small number. And it is not, we all immediately say, well, it's Alzheimer's. They had about 20 different categories of dementia, of which Alzheimer's was one, and of course, for most of us, the most scary, and the one that takes the, the largest number of resources in terms of maintenance of, those, of people with that. And I said, you know, when you look around and you think of the people you know that are in their 60s, 70s, and 80s, I have a friend who, who is uh, mid-80s and is writing her fifth book and, in fact, has the definitive book out on breastfeeding in mm. its thick, sixth printing. My goodness. A woman named Sally Olds. Uh, fa- fascinating. And people are out there that are mature people, and they're in their 60s, they're in their 70s, and they're in their 80s, and they're doing wonderful things. Well, so, Bill, who's 92, is now working on a new idea of tiny houses and cottages. I, I was going to say, Bill, because he, to me, is a, a role model, a perfect example. I read his bio uh, book, and every time I get together with him, with him, I have such a good time. Well, something just happened, though. Um, I was driving with him the other day, and I've been worrying because he's been going to meetings. And, and um, I, I said, I don't think he should be. He has macular degeneration in one of his eyes. And I said, I really don't think he should be driving anymore. But yet I know you can't just give up your car. So I said, what if I find a driver, which I have. And now sure. he gets taken everywhere. Right. And it's only about <laughs> a, a month new. He said, I still feel a little strange. He said, but I'm happy. So we called the other day. He said, I need to go to the cleaners. I need to go because he does the grocery shopping. And it is working out because he now has a a gentleman in his 60s who they do a lot of talking with. And so it's what you said. You have to adjust a little bit. Right. But people who are older, you know, the opportunities are still out there for them. Uh, And it's it's true. You made me think of my mother who um, uh, belonged to a, a bath club. Uh, maybe a half hour or so away from her home. And I arranged for a cab service to take her back and forth. She used it once. She would walk to the bus stop and take the bus back when she was in her 80s and take the I bus. Love it. And I And I said, why, why aren't you using the car? They, you don't have to even pay them because it's all taken care of. You just, just call them. They'll be right over and she said, oh, but I know all the bus drivers. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That, well, and it made him feel more independent. Yes, absolutely. And that feeling is not one we want to dispel at all. And the fact is, um, I was playing golf uh, the other day down here with, with one of the buddies that I grew up with. And uh, he's going to be 90. And we, we went out and we had a grand time. I'm going back to New York for a 90th birthday party of my cousin whose husband is 93 um and they're 
they're off going to the opera and, and you know, all these things. And so I, my, my thought is to encourage people to th- not do forgetting jokes, to look around and think about their contemporaries. And they're out there and they're living full lives. Yes, we do things a little more slowly. As, as my son says, we process data more slowly. We also forget names or we forget, and we forget places and it then it comes to back. Us two or three yes, minutes of course later. it does. That's the processing exactly. more slowly. Exactly. So uh, that's become a, a, a pet peeve of mine, forgetting jokes. Uh, good. I'll, well, I used to be, I used to feel people who made fun of the older adults. I don't do that either. So now I'll add yours to mine. <laughs> but I usually don't even do joking about things like this yes. anyway. I wouldn't do that. Because it, it, it's not tapping the bulk of the pop, of mm-hmm. the adult population, the senior population. They don't fit that forgetting category. Well, let me ask you a question. I know that you've heard it advertised. Luminosity? Yes. I'm going to get it. I won't go, have you done anything no, with I it? Haven't. I'm going to try. Someone told me it was great because it, it helps you. And if you're having deficiencies... And and then it'll help you to think about it. And so I am going to go and investigate it. Anita, I'm definitely doing it. You don't need it. it. <laughs> no, no, I do. Because no, I, no. You know why you don't? All the things that you do, I, I mean, I, I don't know how you manage in your 28-hour day because you are a busy lady. And that's what keeps the oil in the brain working. Okay, but I still want to know what it's about. And okay. I, want, I want to improve myself because I think it's necessary. Um, and and I think Bill have will have fun with it. I think we could do it together. Okay. Well, I've got to, you've got to tell me about. I will. That. Yeah. After you've given it a run. Yeah, I'm going to do I, that. I would like to know more about it. Yeah. But so anyway, there are so many things out there. But so tell me now. Uh, we we always like to talk a little bit about sex when we get together. <laughs> That's true. Because uh, <laughs> because you do wonderful sex articles in Boomer Times. Um, but let's talk about what's happened. So you told me that you uh, when you first you know, did start to date and you were looking for the right person, hard to find because you, you do have certain standards and right. you were very fortunate and you did find someone and it was fun for you and Absolutely. you were so happy. And, and then now that you're, I guess on your feet, I would call it, you're now on your feet that you can choose a little bit about what really is the best for you. Right. Yeah. It, uh, it, actually it's been, uh, I, I, I was thinking about this the other day in terms of, my growing up, and I followed the, a very typical pattern. I came out of high school very young. I was in college. Uh, I went off to the army, came back to college, uh, met uh, a woman in college, uh, dated very little with other women, hit it off, got married, followed all the traditional patterns, had a couple of sons, and, and then, of course, things changed over a long period of time. Now, in this new life, I have dated more women than I ever did in my 20s, <laughs> you know. And, and I, don't, I don't mean that I've bedded them or anything like that. There are a lot of very, very nice women out there. And uh, it, it's been fun meeting them, and I hope they've, they've enjoyed meeting me. And, and some I've dated for longer periods of time. Some have come apart for varied reasons. Distance is one of the big ones. And, in fact... Um, in the first rule of dating in our book, and suddenly solo, is don't date anybody an hour away. Well, I made that mistake a couple of times. Well, even now, uh, young people, oh, the first thing they yeah. say is geographically undesirable. Undesirable, you, exactly. But yeah. Um, yeah, that that is possible. It depends, you know, how intense you are and, and what's really yeah. happening. But but for someone, as you said, you know, now it's a matter of your thinking about what really is easier for you as long as there isn't some other uh, emotional avenues i mean um but i i can see geographics would be impo- important except if you have a driver <laughs> <laughs> but right. but anyway so when you're meeting people now uh, are you anticipating getting remarried no okay so no, you're i don't see that all right so um, what you're anticipating I, is i can't see being in a Close relationship, living with someone, maybe perhaps even living with someone, mm-hmm. or 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 uh, I mean, one of the things I in my interviews, there have been so many new patterns of living as a as a couple that are not necessarily living in the same room together. They may be in uh, houses nearby or 
or one has a place up north and one has a place down south. Uh, there, the combinations have changed enormously. And uh, though I haven't done any research on this, although I'm thinking of doing it, the interest in remarrying, my impression is, has dropped off considerably with seniors. They, they don't feel the need for the legal entanglements that marriage uh, creates and the complexities that it may create for their children and estates. And um, now th- that doesn't mean there aren't good arguments to marry. There are, but it, it's a very individual decision. But certainly at this point, I have the impression that many more seniors live together, become what I, a term I started using, co-pair, and they're, or, or even they, they get engaged. And I knew a couple that had been engaged for 12 years and have no intention of marrying, but she has an engagement ring, and, and she, she's introduced as my fiancé. But the alternative term that I've liked using now is co-pair, as someone, uh, it's, it's male or female, and defines someone that you're very close with. Um, what, what we sometimes call significant other, which is a cumbersome term. And so I started using this term co-pair as, a, as a, an indication of a relationship. So as you were saying that, I was thinking about something. Maybe it was because 40, 50 years ago, people wouldn't, uh, an older adult would not just be with someone else and live with someone without marriage because it just wasn't something that was common. It wasn't wasn't done. done. But maybe now that it is done so much, you're absolutely right. I don't know why. I mean, why someone would have to get married uh, as long as they're together. I mean, I can see they're living together, so they're always together the way they were, but... Uh, we always say, well, may- maybe I've known couples who've gone together for 12, 15 years, and all of a sudden they decide to get married. And I don't understand that, but right. maybe it's like, oh, yeah, we just want to now really make it, you know, set. But also a lot of the government, a lot of governmental um, contracts and things that you have to do, even going to a hospital if you're not right. married. So there are some right. some advantages to that. But you can also... Uh use health proxies as a device around that. I mean, there are ways that people work their way around that. Uh, it's, it's so interesting. The other evening I was um, uh, at, I, I, I now belong to the National Croquet Club in Palm Beach. No kidding. And I'm having a <laughs> grand time there. And it's very relaxed and very relaxed. And uh, after playing, I was sitting with some people and um, uh, there, were, there were two couples and I just assumed they were two married couples. Well, as the conversation evolved, none of them were married. Uh, they were just couples. They had met. One had a couple that had met right there at the Croquet Club a year or so ago. And in both cases, they were living together now. Uh, one couple was off to look at a new apartment. Uh, and uh, uh, they have... Uh, they they. In, in meeting them and in talking to them, you you would see them as truly as a couple. They're finishing each other's sentences, and uh, they talk about common experiences, um, and uh, and yet they were, they had no legal uh, connection in the traditional sense. Well, I don't want to run out of time before we talk about what you created in New York at, at the university. I think that's been very exciting for you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, another thing. The the university connection has uh, has grown. The um, the uh, the Spielman Social Science Research Center has now become part of the Colin Powell School at City College of New York, hmm. and it's the res- the social science research facility where graduate students and upper class students can meet to work on projects in uh, in in um, civic. Uh, values and in international studies and the the Spielman Center is where they can do that and the the key has been that it is multi-dimensional in that where traditionally you've been in psychology or sociology or economics but more and more the the nature of of what we do is it draws on multiple of, of those social sciences and it is that aspect of multidiscipline that the center is aimed at promoting and helping to bring about. Because 
you find in many businesses, as was the case in my business when I founded my company. I had psychologists, I had sociologists, I had economists, I had statisticians, all working within my company. And they had to learn from each other. Well, now we've moved that back so that it can take place at the college level and be prepared to deal with the products, uh, problems of, uh, of, of current civics within your city, within your town, um, and international affairs as well. How, how has the Internet changed all that, Hal? Quicker, more rapid communication, easier to draw on multiple disciplines, and frustrating for seniors <laughs> because we, we, are not, we don't know the buttons to push. But many of us are learning. If you go over to Apple for their classes and you look at who's at their tables, it's, you know, it's heavily mature people with their iPads and wanting to know more. So that's a growing. Uh, I, I mean, we're slow learners, but we sure are learning. And we're interested. And we are interested. And we recognize what it can do for us. So we don't use all the apps of the 20 or 30 apps the kids put on our, our phones and on our pod, but, but we use the ones that are important to us. It's like my bank said, why are you here depositing your checks? I said, because I like that. I know I can do the other. I, I don't even like to use an ATM. I like to take my money, come in here, give it to you. It's exactly just a preference. Right. Uh, exactly right. <laughs> we like our human touch. Yes, and that, that was my next part. Um, you know, there are so many online dating services. Ah, yes. We haven't really yeah. talked about this in a while. And there are a lot of successes, but there are a lot of yeah. failures also. Yeah. I don't, And a lot of fabrication. So, okay, so my question is, you know, we have them now, Christian Mingo. We have even the Cowboys. I mean, I love the country. Got <laughs> right. that great. Do we have them... For people who are over 75 or seven, over, over 80 sure. specifically? Because oh, a lot of people you see yeah. hide their age. Do we have ones that don't hide Th- their age? There are those that do that, that focus on the senior population. Our time, senior singles meet are a couple that pop into my head, and I'm sure there are more that I'm not. But do give create that opportunity. I, I know there's one that, and I don't recall the name of it, that is focused on 75 and over. So are you, do you have to bother saying, you know, five years younger, 10 pounds lighter? I mean, you know, we don't have to do that anymore, um, although I'm sure people do. You see, I, in, in our book, in Suddenly Solo, we say don't do that because the first time you meet, it will be starting with a lie. Right. And so don't do it. We also know, and contrary to the media myth, um, people say, oh, the men want to date young women. It's not true. It's not true. I agree with you. They want to date women in their own age range. They're more comfortable with them. They have more in common. They have shared experiences from their past. Uh, And I I comment sometimes when I've given talks. So the guy's with a a 30-year-old, and he's 80 well, what does he do for the other 23 and a half hours? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, he probably he might maybe wants to um, feel younger by being with someone younger. I don't know what the yeah, difference is. But candy, the but other, yeah. That's true. But what about the cougars? Now, this is a whole new thing that's, that's happened. That's a different thing. And I, uh, one evening, I met a woman. She was beautifully dressed. I remember this. At a talk I was giving. And she was at this talk at a place called Senior Planet in New York. And... Um, and, and, and so before the talk, she introduced herself, and she gave me her card, and her card said Cougar. And then afterwards, we spoke some more, and she said, I find that only young men can satisfy. And she was a woman certainly in her 70s, certainly in her 70s. And that was, that was her view and her position. It's the only woman I, I've met that was overtly and she dated men in her in in their thirties. And I have some friends from one from college and on. She's been with someone for twenty. See, he's twenty five years younger. She's been with him for that 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 many years. I had some yeah. other friends like that, uh, because when you think of it, and you're talking to someone, if they're of the same, you know, um, lifestyle, if they're if they're, there's certain certain pheromones that occur, it really doesn't matter. No, not at all. 
Now, it will maybe as one reaches 90 and the other person is 70 or 60. I'm not sure about that yet. Well, I'm seeing more incidences where the man is younger than the woman, but not in the cougar sense, but three years, five years younger. And, you know, she's 70 and he's 68. Yeah, that's that's nothing, of course not. No, or or even older, that's nothing. Right. Um, I know of, of, of one couple. Actually, I think she's in her 90s now, and he's in her, his mid-80s. They go dancing. She's a dancing teacher, and they, they met because they danced, and, and she teaches dancing to seniors, and they go off to, to dances. They, they do these ballroom dance things. Now, that's fabulous, and, and that's what's keeping her so young also, for oh, the energy and yeah. the exercise. Now. What is their sexual activity? I don't know, but I'm sure there is some. You know, it's just, hey, it's the thing to do. It is. It's yeah. it's really, it is really a different world today yeah, it is a in very so many world. ways, isn't it? Yeah, the culture has changed <laughs> remarkably. And I, I have a premise that the, that today's grandparents, if they're single, behave more like their grandchildren than they do like their children. Because they have the time, too, to do some of those things, right? They multiple date the way their 20-year-old granddaughter does, and they they may change partners. Uh, I mean, uh, their pattern seems to me to be closer to that of the the 20-year-old than of the 50-year-old. Now, that's (laughs) funny. I haven't really heard that before. Yeah, I've been playing around with doing some research. In fact, I had a study designed like that, but I haven't done it yet. You know, you're still into research. It's wonderful yeah. to, to to talk with you and see that you have the little fire in your eyes and you're still <laughs> having so much fun and life goes on and you've accepted everything that, you know, has Adjust, been handed to you. you and it's really, it's really absolutely wonderful. Well, I don't know if you're going to the WIC, but we are going to go Saturday night on April 2nd to the WIC. Oh. And if you're going to be there, we're going to see you. Are you going to be still no, down? No, I you're won't leaving? be. I'm going back on the 30th. But okay. I was at the WIC yeah, uh, uh, you saw just, that. Um, curtains. Uh, right, I saw a curtain yeah. a couple weeks ago, yeah. and uh, and that was fun. I yeah. like going to the WIC. I, I think that's a, yeah. that's lo- a real quiet little gem that it we is, have down here. It is, very much so. Yeah. Well, I have to just tell you, Hal Spielman, uh, and um, we, we always love getting together and talking, and of course, um, Suddenly Solo, get it on Amazon. I think you'll enjoy the book, and keep watching for columns in Boomer Times. Thanks, Hal. Hey, so nice to see you. Again. 